if we go back a few years, uh, really to the mid 20 teens, uh, I'd say all the way till 2019, but certainly uh, 2015, 16, 17, El Salvador was the murder capital of the world. Uh, there were more, more murders in El Salvador's per capita um, per 100,000, which is the way they measure these things, uh, than any place in the world by, by far. I mean, it, was, it had a huge lead. I mean, we're talking about more people being killed by violence in El Salvador than in Afghanistan or in Pakistan, or, which have terrorist, terrorists, or uh, more than in uh, Mexico or Brazil that have gangs and, and have warfare. Um, and there were, uh, again, there were a, a wide variety, large numbers, uh, large large number of places that are very violent, and yet El Salvador stood out as, as extraordinary. Uh, in 2015, El Salvador murder rate peaked at 103 per 100,000. Uh, that is almost double, I think, the, the uh, today, if you look at the today's list, uh, the US Virgin Island actually has <laughs> the highest murder rate. Jamaica, let's take Jamaica as the highest murder rate um, in the world as of 2020. Yeah, the US Virgin Islands numbers are very old. But as of 2020, Jamaica has the highest uh, murder rate per 100,000, and it's 44.7. So that is, uh, that is half, less than half, of what El Salvador's was in um, uh, 2015. There was a, a slow decline in murders from 2015, uh, 16, 17, 18, 19, Actually, pretty dramatic when it comes to uh, murder rates. It, it went from 103 in 2015 uh, to, to really 36 in, uh, in 2019. Um, and, uh, and a lot of that, yeah, we, we'll talk about what caused that. But since then, since then, the rate of change has been, uh, and particularly over the last year, the rate of change has just been phenomenal. That is, in 2019, it was 36, and then dropped in 2020 to, to basically 19.7. But in 2022, uh, murders in El Salvador, the homicide rate in El Salvador per 100,000 dropped to 7.8. Now, 7.8 makes El Salvador, you know, uh, uh, very close to uh, the United States in terms of safety. Um, you know, it's a little bit more violent than the U.S. as a whole, but, you know, uh, uh, less violent than Pennsylvania, less violent than North Carolina, less violent than Georgia or Maryland or Illinois or Tennessee or Alabama or South Carolina or Arkansas. Um, you know, but as violent as Indiana and Michigan. So you've seen this dramatic decline in, um, in homicide in El Salvador from being double the highest rate in the world to being like in pretty much close to an average state in the United States. Not quite, you know, as low as, as, as European countries with significant lower than the U.S. or even lower uh, countries like Japan. You know what, anybody know what Japan's homicide rate is per 100,000? So if El Salvador was 100, it's now 7.8. U.S. in 2020, so it spiked up to 6.6. .6. It's probably a little higher today because it's been on an upswing. What do you think Japan is? Jennifer says 1. Anybody else want to take a bet? Apollo says 0.1. All right, so 1 and 0.1. Anybody else? Under 1. All right, so, so everybody's, everybody's kind of in the ballpark, but the person who's actually the closest is Apollo, uh, it's 0.2, 0 0.2. So uh, a quarter of what you're predicting, Gail. So Gail says 0 0.8. So 0 0.2, uh, South Korea uh, was 0 0.6, but I think most recently it's also 0 0.2. Uh, so it's uh, Singapore is also around 0 0.2. Uh, you know, pretty, uh, uh, pretty amazing. These are the safest places in the world. Uh, you know, uh, put aside a place like Monaco that are just tiny. Uh, but uh, Singapore, Luxembourg, Senegal is is uh, is way uh, down there as one of the uh, one of the safest. Oman, Macau, Japan is point uh, point two. Hong Kong 
is 0.3. So interesting. Um, anyway, so let's let's go back to uh, let's go back to El Salvador. So something happened between 2015 and 2019, and there's something seems to happen between 2019 and 2021. In 2021, the murder rate was 17.6. But then from 2021 to 2022 and to today, something even more dramatic has happened. Uh, and uh, uh, and uh, that is what is interesting. So first, let's try to try to talk a little bit about 2015 to 2019. 2015 to 2019, uh, I would argue, so uh, let's first talk about why there's so much murder in El Salvador. There's so much murder in El Salvador because El Salvador is basically be dominated by two gangs. You've probably all heard about one of the most brutal gangs in all of, maybe the most brutal gang in all of the Americas, and that is MS-13. Uh, MS-13 is based in El Salvador, um, and, and it, 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 it dominates crime in El Salvador, but it does have a competitor, uh, Barros, something like that, also with a number. Uh, so basically two gangs dominate uh, in El Salvador. They run everything. Um, you know, some of it is, uh, is drugs. Uh, El Salvador is uh, on the corridor that brings particularly cocaine from Colombia up uh, to America. But so are a lot of countries, and, and uh, they haven't been uh, quite as, uh, as filled with violence as El Salvador has. Um, El Salvador has these two gangs, and, and basically what has happened uh, these gangs were established in the 1990s, and since the 1990s through the 2000s, what has happened is these gangs have basically been able to carve out themselves as, uh, you know, their own tax collectors, enforcers, in a sense, their own competing governments to the main government that's out there. They make most of their money not from drugs, but from uh, protection money. They basically collect money from local businesses. It's a very poor country. So they can't collect a lot. And of course, because it's a very poor country, there's competition for everybody you can collect from. So they constantly fight over this. And they are constantly slaughtering and killing each other and everybody else. And they fill in a vacuum where the state does not exist. The state does collect taxes as well from businesses and individuals. The state provides, has provided in the past nominal policing, but only nominal, and basically have left the gangs to rule, particularly the poor areas of town. The police are focused on the wealthier areas of town, are protecting the, the rich and connected and politically connected, and basically left the people to fend for themselves. What you have here is real anarchy, alternative private police forces, alternative governance mechanism, mechanisms, and they fight it out. And this fighting, uh, you know, and, and of course, as part of the fight, innocent civilians get killed all the time. And indeed, I would argue that any place in which the state basically retreats from and you know, nominally there are laws, and nominally there's a police force, and nominally there are taxes and enforcement. But basically, we retreat for certain neighborhoods, we retreat for certain areas, we retreat for certain places. What you get in those places is a massive increase in crime and violence and gang warfare. And what you get is the creation of gangs. Basically, gangs are uh, uh, entities that uh, use force, that exert force, uh, they, they are entities that are trying to establish over their little geographic area a monopoly over the use of force. And given that the monopoly over the use of force that's supposed to be there, the legitimate monopoly over the use of force, which is government, has stepped out, they fill in the vacuum with alternative, alternatives, right, alternatives for a monopoly over the use of force. And of course, there's competition, right? It's markets. It's not markets, but I, I'm using the anarchist term for it. They're markets, so you get a rise in alternatives who are trying to each provide a means of a monopoly over the use of force and collecting protection money, protection, which is what government collects, right? It collects taxes, which is supposed to provide you with 
protection. So what you get, in a sense, I should have put anarchism in the title, and then I would have got, I think, uh, more views. We would have got all the anarchists coming. Uh, but, but what you get is, what you get is competition, which is basically competition with guns, and you get is violence. And the violence sometimes peaked, peaks. It accelerates to massive levels, as it did in 2015. But at the end of the day, violence is, is uh, you know, out of control. Violence is not in the interest of the gangs. It, it's, it's constant warfare. People feel threatened. So they, they once in a while rein in the violence, and you get a moderate reduction in violence in 2016, 2017, 2018. Still in 2018, El Salvador is, has the highest murder rate in the world at 51 per 100,000, but it is half of what it was at its peak. But that's because gangs are, are reining it in. It's costly for business to have too much murder, and it reigns in. But it's still, in spite of that, costly of business, and business in quotes, it's still true that violence is, is out of control. Highest in the world. Thank you for listening or watching The Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbookshow.com support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content and, of course, subscribe press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are already subscribers and those of you who are already supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.